guys uh, with a lot of difficulty I've managed to get you to see a model of a gyro compass and what it looks like it's not in a very good shape but at least uh, you'll get a fair idea of uh, what the inside of a gyro compass looks like so let me take you through the parts of the gyro compass here I have previously made videos on gyro compass I'll give you the links to those videos as well but uh, please watch those videos as well to understand the theory of working but today's video is only about showing you the parts of the gyro compass so that you can put the theory in perspective of some practical knowledge here all right so what you see here is a kind of a dilapidated and not in a good shape a gyro compass what it looks like uh, this on top here is the gyro compass card that you can see is marked with the readings uh, this gyro compass card provides the heading to the mariners of course for steering purposes this is the primary compass used on ship for steering uh, purposes all right so also for taking bearings for position plotting this feeds into the other equipments like GPS and radars and RPAS and AIS and all that and provides the ship's uh, heading information mainly. Alright, so what you see on top is the gyro compass uh, card, of course the compass card not, and this is of the gyro compass. Uh, what you should take note of are some of the other parts of the gyro compass. Now this is of course the olden types of gyro compass. This is uh, the one with the gyro motor. It doesn't have a fiber optic mechanism. But what you see here is the motor, the gyro motor is here. If you can see, this is the gyro motor. Uh, it's uh, round in shape. And this is the one that needs to gain a minimum RPM of about, I think, 30,000, 60,000 RPM. And uh, for this gyro motor to gain that RPM of about 60,000 takes about four hours. And these are the olden day gyro compasses I'm talking about, of course. And some of your ships may still be carrying these jump compasses. Uh, the modern day fiber optic compasses of course they take only 20 or 20 minutes to find the settled position but anyhow uh, I'll keep on showing the different parts here so this is the gyro motor and this starts to uh, this starts once you start the gyro the, the power this is the one that starts to gain momentum it starts to spin this is the gyro spin axis as well so it starts to gain momentum inside it and then when it gains a sufficient momentum is then that the gyro can start its direction keeping capabilities what you see here is also a leveler a leveler uh, helps to measure the tilt and drift of a gyro compass axis so that's very useful as well so um, this will tell you whether the gyro compass is tilting or drifting out of its axis as well uh, what you see here as well as here there are two sets of ballistic tanks these ballistic tanks helps to contract for the drift and tilt motion as you can see there on both sides and uh, transfer of weights can take place from one tank to the other to compensate for the drift and tilt. Uh, this may use a mechanism of mercury. On the days they started with mercury, then they shifted to oil, and then the use of trans uh, torsional wires. Uh, but this is uh, the ballistic tank, so this can use oil. And there are motor pumps here that can transfer the oil in any direction depending on uh, how you want to correct the drift, drift and tilt. All right, so you can see there are two sets of these tanks here. Uh, two sets of these ballistic tanks uh, and there is a lot of uh, circuitry involved as well uh, because uh, everything is motor driven so that is why there is a lot of circuitry and that's why you see you cannot use water in these tanks because if the water spills in any way or if there is any damage then all this circuitry will get damaged all this electronic circuitry all right then what you also see is the latitude corrector you can see on top here it's written latitude corrector and this compensates for the latitude correction so basically what this means is uh, you can see the markings here as well and the north and south written as well so you have the north here south here written it's marked with red and blue colors um, and uh, what this helps to do is because it at various latitudes the gyroscope will experience uh, different kinds of Coriolis force and that's also an acceleration force and because of which the drift and tilt will increase or decrease depending on in which direction it is going so the gyroscope will have to compensate for that latitude correction as well. It also has to compensate for speed correction. Uh, other than that, you can see there are a lot of moving parts here. There are a lot of moving parts here. There's a lot of circuitry here. And uh, that is the main disadvantage with these olden gyro compasses that there were too many moving parts, too much electronic circuitry, uh, too many possibilities of this uh, getting damaged. Or not damaged, but uh, 
body parts wearing out with time everything wears out you see so i'm trying to give you some different angles here so that you can look at the gyroscope here carefully all right so i think uh, this is pretty much what i can say otherwise otherwise all the rest of the things is uh, pretty much circuitry motors you can see uh, there's nothing else that i can add to this so let me know what you thought about this video guys and uh, if you want to see more of these videos let me know and uh, all the best with your learning see you soon